When David wakes up, he does every morning to check the cell phone and scroll social media. Then he goes to the kitchen to eat cold cereal, bagel or donut for breakfast. He rarely has personal interactions with loved ones when he leaves the house. When he arrives at work, David finds it hard to focus under the impact of digital distractions. After work, he is not able to make time for a refreshing outdoor walk or workout. Welcome to the 21st century lifestyle. In the book named Brainwash, the authors call this way of life cycle disconnection syndrome, which separates us from a sustainable, healthy and happy life. But fortunately, there are eight ways to avoid this and live a healthy, happy life. How? Watch till the end. Digital detox. Every day, Diana spends several hours scrolling the posts and photos. And once she realises how much time is lost, she starts to feel annoyed, stressed. Her brain seeks a quick fix and the vicious cycle is perpetuating. Why is it so hard to put down our devices? So simple, they are designed to be addictive and these social media companies address the reward circuitry of our brain. Like most of us, Diana becomes a captive of instant gratification. However, there is a way to avoid it. 1. Turn off unnecessary notifications and delete non-essential applications. 2. Start using airplane mode during meals, important conversations, as well as while you are sleeping. 3. Set a timer for 5 minutes and when the clock runs out, ask yourself what you are hoping to gain from further use. 4. Turn on the night mode function to prevent sleep disrupting blue light in the evening. Practicing empathy. David is taking selfies constantly and he is breeding narcissism without aware of it. He is placing himself at the centre of life, starts believing his grandiosity. Narcissism triggers us to compare ourselves to others constantly. More importantly, it makes us move away from feeling empathy for others. Empathy is highly essential for life satisfaction, greater overall well-being. Let's look at the positive sides of empathy. 1. Heightened feelings of trust, creativity and compassion. 2. Lower levels of stress and in turn inflammation. 3. Improved perception of others and an ability to relate, connect and bond. 4. Improved regulation of emotions and the capacity to combat struggles and frustrations. Nature therapy. After staying in an apartment, Clara feels stressed and decides to go to nature. She realises that nature makes her feel good, takes the stress away. Why? Because nature is our place of origin. Our genes are developed for millions of years under its influence. In other words, nature is the original antidote to the hectic, stress-addled reality of modern living. Clara also realised that spending time in nature helps him to focus better and strengthen his thinking ability. Other beneficial side includes 1. It reduces blood pressure 2. It improves sleep 3. Nature boosts immune system functioning and increases energy Maybe you are not living near the forest. Not a problem. Even a park or green space has the same effect on your health and overall well-being. Figuring out food. Alex is eating a croissant and every time he eats, he becomes more captive of this food. Is it his fault? Of course not. He is probably unaware that most products, including the croissants, have sweeteners today, making the vicious cycle work. Ultra-processed junk food is a form of biological warfare that affects our health, decision-making ability and mood. Mood? Yes. It is already verified in several researches. Microbiome in our gut highly influences our mood. Food choices, in turn, impact the normal functioning of the gut. 
Considering all of these, we should consume foods low in refined sugars and carbohydrates, fibre-rich, colourful produce, wild fish, probiotic-rich fermented foods. Successful shut-eye. Like Brad, most of us suffer from sleep deprivation. Or the worst, we are proud of how we can stay several days without enough sleep. But is sleep an unnecessary luxury? Recent researches claim not. It may influence how much we eat, what we eat and how our metabolism runs. Additionally, it deactivates our decision-making ability, so leads to poor, impulsive food choices. You can avoid it by making your room as quiet, peaceful and sleep-friendly as possible. Also, you can cut out all caffeine after 2pm. Moreover, establish a bedtime routine that tells your body it's time for sleep. And the last before bedtime, consider taking a bath or shower, listening to calming music or reading a book. Happy body, happy brain. For Adam, it is no secret that he should exercise to be healthy. Like most of us, he may be unaware of the benefits of exercise on our high-order thinking. Think about our hunter ancestors. Most scholars consider that there was a correlation between our move and brain size. Exercise does more better things for our brain than a single pill can do. It improves brain function, cognition and acts as a first aid kit for damaged brain cells. Before insisting on a sedentary lifestyle, consider these. When a body is in motion, other biological effects occur. Less inflammation, lower stress and cortisol levels. Better blood sugar control. Better sleep. Better mood and memory and others. Still evidence? Go outside and experience yourself. Quiet time. Melinda's computer is running slowly and she is taking it to the computer expert. Any technician would ask is how many applications have you open and how many programs are you operating in the background. She realised that it could also apply to her brain. A computer needs a reboot to refresh everything. Brain also needs to reboot for better, more efficient function. Meditation does this for the brain. Before learning meditation, you can do two simple things. One, you can start with practicing moments of silence. Two, deep breathing can be done anywhere, anytime. Strong bonds. And the last, interactions with other people are vital in helping you escape disconnection syndrome. You'll benefit from this activity by spending at least 10 minutes of unbroken time connecting with another person each day. The catch? The connection has to occur in person or on the phone and it has to entail conversation dedicated to learning something new about the other person.